All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of this. My name is Felix, and I am calling in from Singapore. And thank you, Max, for the amazing introduction. And uh, just, just a quick you know, introduction again. My name is Felix, and I am one of the co-founders at ADP List, a platform connecting designers and mentors around the world. So I want to share a little bit about you know, uh, me being a human being first before even a, you know, a designer or entrepreneur, right? Uh, because I always love being a human first before anything else. Uh, and, and that's something that I have always preached uh, before you know, going into the talk itself. So I am a human being and a creative thinker on a bold mission to design purposeful product for humanity. Uh, and the way that I do that is through product design and by really understanding the people around me and just the way that the universe works and how we can you know, uh, better design a more you know, positive world for us to all live in. And that was why you know, earlier last year, uh, James and I, we co-founded ADP List, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about uh, later towards the end of the talk. So today, I want to share about a very interesting topic uh, that matters to me, and I, and I do believe that I speak for a lot of designers and entrepreneurs, uh, that matters to people in this community um, who wants to design something uh, better and faster. But, you know, sometimes they, they question, uh, can I, can, is that kind of design really cheap? Uh, can we really make it affordable for people? And so this topic here today um, means a lot to me specifically because, um, you know, we want to be able to design products that are better, faster and cheaper in the sense that it's accessible to people, right? Uh, quality can be accessible. And I, I will use ADP list today as a case study on, you know, why quality is accessible to people and why conversations and why quality can be, can be democratized uh, throughout the world. So if you have any questions, feel free to tweet me or, you know, put it in the comments on YouTube or on Twitch if you're watching there. Uh, and I would love to answer them at the end of this talk. So, just a quick show of hands, right? Uh, I can't see anyone right now, but I would love to have a quick show of hands uh, in the comment section um, on YouTube or Twitch. How many of you have actually seen this chart before, right? Uh, where you kind of have to do a trade-off between good, cheap, and fast, right? If it's good and fast, as you can see, it's got to be expensive. Uh, if it's good and cheap, then it, it, it's going to be slow, right? Uh, and if it's fast and cheap, it's not the best quality. And if it's uh, everything, then you're probably dreaming, right? Uh, but what if I tell you that this is actually a thing of the past right now, um, that consumers are looking for things that are good, fast, and cheap, and there are actually companies and products that are already designing for such experience or in a way designing such products uh, ready to be adopted by people. So I will share a couple of companies that already been doing that, and uh, you probably know these companies, and I will, I will share a little bit about uh, what I think and how we can do that uh, to design for better, faster, and cheaper. So to the next point, it's uh, how many of you actually have you know, thought about this before, right? It's not a common thinking, but uh, you, you could feel free to comment in the sections, uh, you know, in the comment section below and tell me what you think uh, of good user experience uh, versus of the value of the product. I, I would love to hear, and you know, I would jump back in the comments after this, this conversation, uh, we've, after this presentation with you to see how many of you actually answered this question because I, I am personally very curious about what you guys think. Uh, how many of you here think that good user experience equals to the value of the product? Oh, that means that, you know, a value of a product is directly equated to how easy or how simple it is to kind of like get the product. Just drop it down in the comments below, right? Uh, and, and I'll tell you that, you know, from personal experience and I, I can be sure is that a good user experience is never really actually the value of a product, right? And what that means is that a good user experience is only the bridge towards a value of a product, right? Uh, and, and if you don't get that, I'll give you an example, right? Uh, and I'm sure some of you guys here or majority of you guys here might know, might have heard of Craigslist or might have used it, uh, but Craigslist isn't really, you know, they don't really have the best experience to use it, right? Uh, and I would say even so, like for Amazon, right? Amazon is huge. We love Amazon, but Amazon does not have a very superior, um, you know, user experience as compared to, you know, maybe some other e-commerce, uh, but it never fails to deliver the value, which is Amazon is faster, is better in, in some sense, and it's uh, cheaper, right? Uh, for some of the products. So if you think about that, the value of the product uh, never really equates back to how easy it is uh, being used, right? But really, what is the value that people are seeking for in your product 
not how simple it is to use. So that is one of the common misconceptions that I that I want to put away, you know, early in this uh, call because I, I know that you know a lot of people and especially designers uh, that are coming into the industry thinks that a simple product or an easy to use product equals to the value of the product. But no, right? If you look at Craigslist, I think that's the best example uh, out of you know a lot of things as well. So I'll dive a, 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 um, deeper into the better, cheaper, and uh, faster um, equation for everyone here. So the best product started out uh, really just being better, faster, and cheaper. And so what does this mean, right? Um, so when I say that the best product started out, and that means from day one, they are actually already better, faster, and cheaper, uh, but that does not mean that they stop improving, right? Because design has always been and will always be an iterative process. How do we make it better? How do we iterate it? And you know, how do we actually uh, define uh, the best product? Because there is no best product out there, all right? So I, I, I'm taking three companies here. Uh, some of you guys might recognize this, some might not. Uh, the logo is kind of hidden there. Uh, but these are the three products that you know uh, people know of globally and, and sort of use them, right? And these are the earliest days of their website uh, when they sort of you know first launched, right? As you can see, visually is not that appealing as what you have today. Um, and in terms of like user experience, it's it's very clunky, there's a lot of text, you know. As, as a UX designer, you probably know all these words, right? I don't have to explain them, but you know what I mean, right? Is that the first website and the first product isn't really that good in terms of experience, but people still use them. People still adopted this, right? And what are these three companies? On your left, you have Netflix. In the middle, you have Airbnb. And on the right, you have Uber, right? Uh, and, and these are the three, one of the biggest, you know, startups and companies, uh, tech companies that we have today uh, from Silicon Valley, right? And, uh, and around the world. So if you think about it, when they started their product, it wasn't necessarily better in terms of like experience. Uh, you know, the design of it, you know, the looks, the visuals, you know, uh, the design of the experience isn't really that optimized, but the value that they were serving was there. And that was where it was better, right? So now as we dive into the topic of being better, I want you to think better, not in experience, but better in value, right? As a designer, you got to understand that. So Netflix, you know, for Netflix case, people wanted to not buy a, a, a tape or a movie. They just wanted to rent out, uh, rent the, the shows or the movies, right? For Airbnb, people literally had no alternatives when there were no hotels available. And for Uber, people just wanted a way more convenient, you know, uh, a method to get a cab instead of just flagging one by the street, right? So um, they literally solved that problem, right? It, it doesn't matter the interface. It doesn't really matter the experience. All it matters was, are you solving that problem and are you giving that value? So how do we design better? So um, feel free to take a screenshot or whatever, um, but to sum it up really clearly, how do we design for better is to understand the problem that you are actually solving for. Now, back to the point of Netflix is that people didn't want to buy, they just want to rent it, right? People don't want to buy and keep it for like 10 years or whatever because they don't have the use for it. They just want to rent it for one time and return it back. Right, so so they understood the problem that they were solving as first, and they pay attention to their customers, right? And uh, all of this wouldn't have happened if they hadn't had talked to their customers in the very very early days of their product uh, um, building, right? So um, it's very important for you to talk to your customers and understand the problem that you're solving for in this space, so that you can create the right value. Now, next, um, I want to go into the part of faster, right? Uh, in a sense. How do we be faster as designer? Now, when I mean fast, I don't mean, you know, uh, how do we basically do things faster? How do we get from, you know, um, how do we get our design from, you know, iteration A to B faster? How do we ship things faster? It's not really that fast. But what I mean fast is how do you deliver your value as fast as possible, as fast as the user wants and needs it, right? Now, I, I have I took two examples. Uh, probably some of you guys might not have heard of Flexspot, um, but Uber, it's very clear is that the way that they deliver their value faster is by operating and having more cars on the road, right? And if the, by the push of a button, you actually can get a car um, almost instantly or just within a couple of minutes. And that's because they have a huge chunk of supply of cars that are running around the road that are ready to serve you, right? So the value of the platform increases as the amount of you know cars increases as well, right? So there was basically a faster way to get a cap, cap right? Not because the experience was easier, 
but because there were way too many caps on the way, way, way too many cars on, on the road for them to utilize, and they were able to get you really fast. And for Flexport, right, uh, one of the delivery companies, uh, shipping companies, they were able to do way faster, I think 10x faster deliveries uh, than the existing solutions out there. So the key for designing faster is to understand first that collaboration is key, right, as a designer. So design can only work so far, as you can see, right? I haven't really talked about like, oh, you got to do research or everything like that, or you got to kind of like do your persona. But understanding that collaboration is key is so important because without the operations team at Uber, you know, people, they probably wouldn't have that much fleet of cars on the road. So to know that as a designer, you got to know which part of the equation in the value is important. Design for that, run that, test that, right? So collaboration is key for, for, for you know, all designers, product managers, uh, whoever that's watching this. Um, second is to know what should be faster, right? Should the onboarding be faster? Should the payments be faster? Should the comments come in faster on Instagram? You know, how do we optimize for that? How do we design for those things? So is to have a, you have to have a clear understanding of what is the value that you're serving and what needs to be faster, right? And the third one is measuring if it's really faster. Now, some of the times where you kind of think like, oh, it's fast, you know, um, but it might not be, right? So um, really go down to the ground and measure these very important metrics for that. I hope you guys are, you know, catching along and taking your screenshots. Right, and, and the last one, you know, I want to talk about is uh, cheaper, right? So I would love to see in the comments, uh, how many of you here think that cheaper means, you know, lower quality here, right? Uh, what if you pay 99 cents for like, you know, something, right? Uh, would that be low quality? I would love to hear thoughts on, on the comments. All right, I'm seeing a couple of comments. Cool, so I think, People, everyone has different thoughts on Twitch and, and, and YouTube, if you guys are seeing. Um, the thing is this, right? Uh, cheaper does not necessarily mean low quality. Um, sometimes cheaper just means that in a sense of a unit economics, uh, it has been drive down to a price point where it's affordable. Now, I'll give you an example, right? Uh, when Tesla started in the very early days, Tesla was really expensive, right? Uh, but as the mass started to adopt it, as the technology gets better, uh, the unit economics makes more sense and things, you know, the price rel became relatively cheap for the day-to-day -day consumers to start buying them. Uh, and of course, you know, 10 years later, Tesla is going to be definitely cheaper than what it is right now because of battery technology and more, right? So things get cheaper and that does not mean the quality is not that good. I love Tesla, you know, uh, and, and I, would, I would love to have it in Singapore, right? Uh, they are probably going to push it out soon, hopefully. Um, so that said, um, you know, cheaper does not mean low quality. Cheaper just means that they have already achieved a certain uh, scale of unit economics there. So I'll give you an example, right? Um, so how many of you here heard of Patreon? Quite a few. Um, how many of you here heard of Buy Me A Coffee? Quite a few as well, I'm sure. So um, Buy Me A Coffee actually did something, you know, uh, I would consider awesome on their platform, uh, which is comparing their website to their competitors' website, which is Patreon, right? So they literally put it side by side, buy me a coffee and Patreon, and they compare every single thing, right? And they tell their customers that we are more worth of a value. Now, if you see where I'm coming from, the word cheaper does not actually mean just necessarily the price. It means the value that the people are getting out of it. Now it drives back to the point of being better and faster is what value are you delivering at that price point, right? So they put a comparison between buying a coffee and Patreon. And of course, you know, they both have like different strengths and, you know, uh, whatnot. But by spelling out really clearly to consumers, you have actually sort of tell them, say, hey, for this price, you're actually buying something of value here, right? So so that, that is how you actually kind of like, you know, deliver that value at a certain price point that you want, right? Uh, which is how most brands actually price their product, right? Uh, they sell the value, not the product. Right, so um, people are willing to buy at that value. Okay, cool. So how do we exactly design for cheaper? Um, so two points, uh, really fast one. Uh, the first one is to know that your consumers are smart, the customers are smart, so they are rational. So don't even try to you know think like oh I I, I can I can you know um, jack up the price or something like that, right? Uh, because customers are smart and they will they will. Um, go to somewhere else uh, with a better quality or even the same quality at a better price, 
All right. So I'm pretty sure that us, everyone here as consumers, we have faced that. We we love that. Okay. So that's one. Um, the second one is to be radically transparent. Now, what I mean is that you should help your customer make a very clear decision when they are purchasing your product, right? Um, just like buy me a coffee and Patreon, right? Uh, putting side by side literally and telling people that, hey, look, this is where we stand. This is where our value is, right? And this is why we are worth that price, right? So, so always be transparent with your customers and always be transparent with your community on what you're serving there. Cool. Now I'm going to give a real life case study, but before that, I would love, you know, you guys to comment down below or whatnot and, you know, kind of like, um, give me your thoughts so far about better, faster and cheaper, because now I'm actually going to dive in the real life case study, which I personally worked on with my co-founders and the team at ADP list. So if, in case you guys haven't heard of ADP list yet, I'm going to give a quick, uh, intro of that. So ADP list is a platform for designers to find book and meet mentors globally. So you can go there, you can find, you know, mentors like the director of LinkedIn, the director of Facebook, you know, uh, designers from Facebook and whatnot. You can book their calendar and you can get on the call with them, you know, for a portfolio review, for an, uh, you know, for a uh, career advice or whatnot. They're willing to talk to you as mentors. Um, now, we, we started really last year in April uh, 2020 when COVID hit and uh, we have grown tremendously uh, through then. And in January, we have seen over a thousand bookings on ADP this platform itself. And that is incredible. Uh, and I'm so grateful, you know, um, for the mentors and community who has been supporting and being a part of this platform, right? And so now I think it deserves its own case study uh, for a couple of minutes, Hall of Fame. Uh, and I'll tell you um, the evolution of, of what has been and, and uh, what has been on this platform, right? So just a brief, you know, throwback, um, like throw back back to uh, last April, right? Uh, where you can see me tweeting and say, hey, help retweet for designers. Uh, you know, let's build a community around and help people on this, right? And it's actually a spreadsheet, as you can see, it was just a simple spreadsheet that allowed people to put in their name and say, hey, I want to help people. I want to, be, to, to mentor someone. I want to mentor a designer. And look, now, if we go back to the theory of better, faster and cheaper, that this Excel sheet technically solves that. It might not be faster at this point of time, but what it did is was that it was already way better and cheaper than anything else, else out there, right? Because think about it, if you were to reach out to someone on LinkedIn, call LinkedIn message someone, you guys would take typically about a couple of days of conversations or even a couple of weeks and say, hey, how are you? Can I get on a coffee with you? You know, can I get mentored by you? That's so awkward for even, you know, an introvert for my, like myself um would find it hard to you know, bring up that conversation right uh and it's not for everyone uh to go on social network to, to to do that right so by having a curated list of people that you can already reach out to and have the intention to mentor you you know it is already better and last but not least it's free right people are doing it for pro bono right so um and these people are really really high quality folks right as you can see there we have folks from doordash you know um tokopedia grab whatever right so and next, we actually built a website for it, right? So this is an evolution, as you can see, a little bit of evolution about, uh, you know, the, the mentoring, you know, how we actually start to display the mentor on a website. So FYI, we actually built a website out of the Excel sheet. So everything really began from the Excel sheet, right? We started to build a website around it. And today, this is just a screenshot, screenshot just right before the call. We have over 927 mentors on the platform. Um, and, you know, it, it, we, we do vet through all the mentors. So there is a qualification uh, process that we kind of like, you know, vet through the, the mentors and acceptance rate is about 40% right now, um, 30 to 40%. So it's pretty exclusive to be a mentor on ADP list. But most importantly, we want to maintain that quality. Now to the point of being better, this is where ADP list really stands out as, you know, you can reach out to people directly, uh, but most importantly, they have the quality. Now remember, the word cheap does not mean that it's, you know, at the price point, but the value that people are getting out of it, the quality that people are getting out of it, right? So, so this is the platform where we are today. Um, and, you know, we have seen over a thousand bookings and a thousand reviews on the platform. So once you have booked, you can leave your mentor review. That's awesome. And then you, that kind of really builds up the quality of one's profile and on the platform as well. So some things that I've learned uh, by building ADP list 
is that in terms of better, it was really directed to the mentors, directly to the calendar or the email. It was a dedicated platform for someone to really go and reach out, you know, for advice or for portfolio review, right? And and next faster, right? You are able to just book directly. No conversations needed, no questions asked. You are just able to get in their 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 emails or their you know calendar and say, hey, can you help me with this? Right. And they are so willing to open up their conversations. Uh, and by the way, uh, ADP this definitely has uh, opened up a new perspective for me about humanity and just being people wanting to help one another. Right. Uh, that's, that's just incredible for me to witness. Uh, and I would love to share that with everyone today. Uh, and the third one uh, being cheaper is not necessarily cheaper, but you know, it's really about the value that is delivering. Right. Even if I were to pay someone like a dollar every month, like I would say, Hey, Look, Max, you're my mentor. I'm just gonna subscribe to you for a dollar per month, uh, in a way of like tipping you. I would do that. Why? Because Max is delivering the kind of value that I wouldn't be able to buy anywhere else, or even be able to buy with money, right? So, so for me, um, that kind of value is so you know, um, it's, it's just out of the universe for me uh, to be able to reach out to these people that I have never been able to see in the past, right? Uh, or just connect to, right? So, um, that's that's amazing. Uh, but thankfully uh, for now, and uh, we, we are really trying to say, how can we design a better experience around that and constantly improve for our community, right? Uh, yeah, and in the terms of value, it's pro bono. So I would encourage you guys to reach out to someone. If you're a designer, you know, um, one thing a mentor or just really trying to get your portfolio reviewed or career advice, uh, those are your mentors there. So go for that. So to, to the point of, you know, um. Um, you know, what I've built and uh, better, cheaper and faster, I, you know, ADP is, is a very clear case study of how you can use design and how as a designer, you can think in the point of how do you design value instead of designing product. All right. So I hope that you have learned something today about designing value um, together with a real case study. So you know that it's real, you know that it's happening. Uh, and I hope that it's something that you can really think about as a designer moving forward, that you will design for value and not just for product. All right. So um, thank you so much for staying through this conversation. Uh, I always love to say that it's a conversation because, you know, I love it to be two ways. So let's get to the question Q&A. Uh, feel free to tweet me. Feel free to, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll be happy to chat with anyone after this conversation as well. Felix, thank you so much, man. That was an awesome talk, man. That's <laughs> I like that you approached. I, I was talking, I think, last week uh, to my partner about the the, the three concentric circles. Uh, uh, <laughs> when, I, when I saw your talk, I was like, oh, man, I'm all over this. Um, so we've got a couple of questions. Uh, just to start out, uh, how do you determine what better, cheaper, faster means to stakeholders? Right. Okay. So better, cheaper, faster to stakeholder, it means really studying and understanding two things, your customers and the nature of the business, right? Um, when you think about better, faster and cheaper, what does, you know, let's focus on the better and faster, right? What does better and faster means for your consumers, right? In the sense of Uber, better and faster, it means being able to get a cab within three minutes, right? Just push a button of a button, you're able to get a cab, right? That was really that value proposition. And in the case of ADP list, it's like, can I just get a mentor, get on a call with someone and, that's done, right? That is better, that is faster as compared to, you know, starting a whole conversation just to get on the call, right? So if you think about that, uh, you got to really understand from your customer's point of view, um, what is better and faster for them. And the start of cheaper is a little bit of, uh, easier to understand. Um, that in itself, you have to understand uh, what are the what is the market doing, right? Uh, are there different solutions out there? Are there solutions that are, you know, uh, in a way cheaper or, you know, on, in terms of price point, and then uh, can you actually uh, uh, provide more value at the same price or even uh, more value at even a cheaper price, right? Um, so those are research that you have to do. Uh, those are um, talking to customers, I would say. Excellent. No, that, no, you covered it. Um, 
So this is a, a, a kind of a larger question. Um, could you tell us a bit more about how you came up with the idea for ADP list and specifically how did you execute it using this, using a better, cheaper, faster model? Sure. So um, first of all, ADP list uh, really started just as something that I, that I think, you know, I just want to help people. Um, you know, people were getting laid off and they wanted a way to connect and get better to, you know, land jobs and whatnot. Uh, I think, you know, people have always wanted a mentor, right? People have always wanted a mentor um, and they, they have just not been able to see each other um, before ADPs have existed, right? Uh, they have not been able to see that, hey, this guy's a mentor, I want to reach out to him because everyone is on social network, it gets confusing. So there wasn't really a platform for that. Um, and so for us, it wasn't really an idea. It was more of like, we just want to help people. Um, but today, today at ADPs, the mission is to democratize mentorships for any and everyone around the world so that we can all get access to quality mentors. Um, and, and I truly believe that, you know, in terms of the next generation of human capital and in the next generation of just mobilizing our talents, uh, mentoring and mentorship is going to be an incredibly important part of that, right? Uh, you could come out of school and you'll be really, really lost as a fresh grad, right? And you, you'll be like, hey, what do I do right now? And imagine that you would have a mentor there for you to reach out and just say, hey, uh, what do I do right now? Do I find a job? What do we recommend? You know, someone that has walked the, the path of your shoes. Uh, and that to me is incredibly inspiring. And that to me, uh, I believe is the fu future of human capital here. Um, so that was how the idea came about, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, how it's formed. In terms of the better, cheaper and faster, I'll be honest, uh, is that initially when, when, and when it was started, we hadn't designed that particularly to the better and faster, cheaper model. Uh, but as we look back, it made a lot of sense to us that it was designed with that in mind, because first, you know, we, of course, wanted to keep it accessible to everyone. Um, second, we wanted to make sure that, uh, what we're solving here and what we're designing here is a direct clear path to the value in the sense that the value is being able to get on the call. Right, faster in a sense that how can we cut down the conversations and all the talks and the messages and just get to the call directly with someone, right? So that was when we actually integrated Calendly into our platform and say, all right, now you can book someone directly through the platform, right? Uh, and that was really how uh, you know we we really innovated along the way and iterated. So it wasn't like the first idea that came in mind, but it was through a lot of testings and talking to people. Yeah, scheduling can be just. Totally, like that last mile is so so critical. Yeah, the last mile, exactly. Yeah. No, um, and honestly, thinking about just how important mentors are to people, it's just like I can see. Uh, I imagine if you ask any any like top person in any field, they're going to have a list of mentors. Like nobody got to where they are at the top of their field without having mentors along. Oh yeah, hard to get people without started. Like it's so just important. Um, yeah. So uh, one question we had, uh, again, it's a, a somewhat, just take it how you will. How does, how does the better, cheaper, faster model relate to defining scope? And more importantly, defining and sticking to scope and avoiding scope creep. So yeah, how do you apply it there? Okay, um, I, I, I'm not sure if I get the question right, uh, but scoping product, right? I mean, uh, you, you must be talking yeah. about just yeah. project just project definition so yeah how does okay. how does using that model apply to like keeping keeping a project um you know on track and under budget etc like how do yeah okay. when you're initially just defining it sure so in in terms of you know um having like a client project i'm not saying charge your client lesser all right uh what i'm saying here is that the cheaper part um should be for the consumers in the sense that you know, at the end of the day, the end consumer of this product, it should be receiving an accessible rate for them, right? Uh, or a, a price point or whatnot. The value has to be good enough to serve that. And and uh, I, I shared about this, you know, a couple of times uh, is that always go back to your users, right? There is nothing that you can define clearly without talking to your users. Uh, and in a sense is that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, like even to today, uh, my team and I at ADPs were discussing and, you know, talking about what can we constantly do. And every week we push out new, you know, functions and, and, and whatnot to make sure that we better serve the community. And one of the things that these functions are being pushed out uh, is not because, you know, we just assume that it's better, faster and more accessible. But, you know, we really talk to every single of our users and ask them, hey, um, how, 
how do you find this? And you know, uh, what is what is happening right now? And we did a survey, right? Uh, and we talk to people on video calls and really tell them, say this this is what we're building. Can you test it and whatnot? So a lot of times uh, when you do projects, uh, I would almost say that uh, when you're scoping, you have to first have something in mind, like a hypothesis, right? And say, okay, this is what I think uh, would be better, faster, and cheaper. And uh, this is what I want to test out, right, uh, for the project. And you kind of experiment with that. So a project that you're taking on shouldn't be, you know, I, I'm, I'm a strong believer that a project shouldn't be one time, uh, unless you are in an agency. I don't think you have a choice. But if you have a chance to work on iterating a product and working on one single product, you will know how exciting it is because the more experiments you run, the more findings you get. And it's basically like blitz, right? Blitz uh, uh, um, basically means going really fast, right? And uh, when you blitz your design, right, uh, you basically can run almost up to 10 experiments every single week and you get the best results out. And you know that the best result is the one that gives you the better, faster and cheaper, right? Because that's the results that drive the outcome, right? So uh, run a lot of experiments with that hypothesis and run different experiments to test out that hypothesis as well. Um, uh, I'll give you a case, right? Uh, when Twitter first started, their growth was pretty much like, you know, growing like that every day. It was growing. Uh, that was when they started, that was when they ran about three experiments per day, right? Uh, per week, I believe. 10 experiments per week on one hypothesis, the growth went like that. Now, to anyone watching this, product people, engineer guys or startup founders or designers, you have to have an experimental mindset. Now, sometimes it gets really hard because it's like people are pushing. It's like, why are we pushing out so many things in one week, you know, whatever. But you got to know, like the more you experiment, the faster you are, the faster you will get to your outcome as compared to someone else who is doing the free experiments, right? So something to keep in mind, all right? Experiment matters, uh, experiment matters in your project. No, that's that's excellent because I what I'm hearing is make sure your projects are small enough to where you don't like the scope can blow up and it's not going to mess anything up it's just really exactly. iterative process is really the best way to kind of run with this with the better cheaper faster model um yeah uh one question this is <laughs> i like this one um which of the three of of cheaper faster or better cheaper faster do you think is the most difficult to do well and how do you overcome uh common obstacles within that one Okay, that's a very interesting question, actually. Uh, I never thought of that. But if I were to give you something on the spot right now, being spontaneous about it, I would say that the tough part would be to find a cheaper. To find a cheaper. Because cheap is subjected to everyone's purchasing power. Uh, the word cheap is, uh, you know, basically like of a price point point of view, you know, it's very subjective to any and everyone. Right to find a price point that is everyone is comfortable for might not be the, the best, uh, the, the the right, the best thing that you can do. Uh, but if you kind of think about better and faster, uh, that can be actually delivered, uh, really, really well if you understand your users and the market well enough. Like as long as you know what you're doing, better and faster, and with a lot of experiments, and I do mean a lot of experiments, you would be able to uh, sort of get that. But in terms of uh, cheaper, you have to run a separate set of experiments just to know what's the best price point. And even when you do that, you know, it might not be something that is desirable because what is desirable for you as a consumer is not might not be desirable for a business, right? And what I mean is that you could technically, you know, give like a really good price for everyone. But if it's not making a profit for your business, you're not in the business of business, right? Uh, and, and, and this is the reality that as a, as a designer, you're hired to make sure that you balance between your users and the business. Because, you know, if I hire you as a designer, I don't just expect you to tell me that, all right, it's usable, let's launch it. Because that doesn't drive a business goal. What people are looking for is, is this usable? Is this affordable for the people that we are pushing out? But at the same time, does it make financial and economic sense to the company? Uh, which is why the part of like, you know, um, cheaper part would be the more challenging one personally, because uh, you would have two sides to balance, the user and the business, whereas compared to the better, faster, just the users. Yeah. 
No, that's that's a really good answer. Uh, and that's a tough question because you could have, depends on what you apply it to or how you're going to answer. But exactly. I think, I, no, you covered it though for really what that's going to be. Um, oh, uh, someone had a question specifically just around ADP list. Um, sure. Is it, it's scoped or not scoped. It, it's open to all fields for mentorship, right? Not just design and UX. So currently it's uh, design and product management. Okay. Is there going to be yeah. additional mentorships or is it just focused on that for right now? Is there any, what's the, so, is there any kind of roadmap? Yeah, the roadmap is that uh, currently is design and product management, but we will be expanding out into engineering and deeper into product management and even up to sales and marketing, uh, copywriting as well, uh, really, really soon, uh, probably by quarter three or two uh, this year. So yeah, uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, we are super excited for that actually. Yeah, no, I, I can imagine anyone who's like in any field wants this. This is such a good, such a good product. Thank uh, you. Okay, um, how, how can people get a hold of you? I guess let's let's review that and make sure people know where to awesome. find you if they have any other questions. Um, right. So this is like the shameless plug time, right? So uh, I'm, I'm just gonna come. plug away. <laughs> Camera right there. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. So a couple of ways. First thing, uh, Twitter. Right. You guys have my, you know, screen share here or something. Uh, Twitter. We're gonna, we're gonna share it in the thread for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Share in the thread. Uh, Felix Lee Z D. Right. Uh, I, I tweet me, DM me. Right. Uh, there uh, on LinkedIn where I am very uh, active there. So I post a lot on LinkedIn about my thoughts about design and startups and whatnot. Feel free to follow there. Um, so design, uh, basically Twitter and, and LinkedIn. Uh, Instagram is a little bit private, uh, but yeah, LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you want to book my time as a mentor, as, as someone you want to speak to, go to ADP list, search, search for Felix Lee. The calendar is there. Uh, feel free to book anything you want. That's awesome. Well, Felix, right. we appreciate you so much. I know it's almost 1 a.m. there in your time. So uh, thank you for, for staying up late yeah. and talking to us. We, we really appreciate it. And yeah, for sure, so Max. yeah, pleasure to be here tonight. Yeah, thank you all so much. <laughs> Have a great, great event. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Um, everyone, we're going to get, we're going to pause for the next 15 minutes. Um, you should have your code links in the, uh, in your email. So check your email if you got a swag ticket for that uh, DoorDash code. Um, and we'll see you all here at 1115. Thanks.